Okay, my uh, 2001 Volkswagen Passat with the 2.7 liter, or 2.8 liter uh, V6 is giving me error codes 491, 492, which are secondary air system banks, both banks. Um, so I actually ran it through a test on VADCOM, um, testing the secondary air system, running it. Um, what was that? Ah, dang it. They, uh, when you run the test, you actually activate the secondary air system um, actuator and it, you can hear a hissing noise from underneath here. It's coming from underneath the intake manifold, so I'm going to remove that. I actually started the process here. I got this off, um, took off this. This is actually, was kind of a pain, but it's only held on by one bolt. goes right through there. And remove the um, radiator box. So I'm going to take out this next. Hopefully I can look underneath there and see what is making the hissing sound. But I am definitely leaking some intake manifold pressure over there that's not giving me the proper air, proper airflow on the secondary air system. So that's it for now. I'll uh, have to... I'll report in once I get that off, which is just a matter of removing a bunch of these 10 millimeter bolts. There's one, two, three, I believe, and that should lift right up. Disconnect this. I'm going to probably have to disconnect a few of these wires. Ah, I could just probably tilt it in. Okay, then now I'm going to disconnect each one of these um, spark plug wires. And I marked them one, two, three. This one. You can't really see that I put uh, writing on them, but this is number one. That's the longest one. And uh, I'm doing this so that I can then lay it over that way. Right now, I can lift it up, but I can't go anywhere. Once I lay it over that way, uh, it should be out of my way and I can work on the intake manifold. So on this coil pack or spark yeah three coils across here um but this is set up like this and then this comes off and there's another bolt i'm gonna undo right there uh, before you work on any of these uh, coils you always want to disconnect the negative battery lead there okay we got all the bolts off we got all the plugs out you gotta be real careful when you pull these plugs out you gotta pull them Kind of straight out, otherwise you're gonna break the tips off like that, and you get the little remnants. I don't know how that'll work when I put them back on. I might have to get new spark plug wires. Boy, those are fragile. Anyway, so okay, so I got it all. The plugs, bolts out. I can lay it off to its side, and here's what you see. Not much. I was really hoping I'd see some hose that was laying there with a leak in it, a big crack or something. This hose right here is looking pretty old over here on the left. So I'll most likely replace that one. It's kind of a it just runs up there, so nothing major. I'm gonna have to go to the next step, pull the fuel injectors off and then the manifold. A lot of dirt down there. It's good to do stuff like this every once in a while. Just clean out your engine. Break things. Okay, I just found this hose or vacuum line laying here loose. It ran up. I think it, it connects. It's got a pretty similar to something that's on this. So I believe it connects on there. I just want to make note for I better put it all back together. I'm going to take off the fuel injections now. There's four bolts. One, two, three, four. I had the spark plugs, uh, actually the fuel injection, electrical connections disconnected so I can hold up and away. Okay, so I got all the hoses, wires, I think I got them all disconnected. 
and uh, probably the hardest part was just connecting the coolant hoses that go into this throttle body back here. I ended up using a mirror, as you can see, to uh, give myself better visibility. But here's one coolant hose, and I actually took it off at the end of the hose. Um, I don't know why, it just seemed easier. Same with the second one here. So I disconnected that, that where it connects into this pipe back here. Light's just okay. Um, so now I'm going to lift this up in a way. Let's see if we can... Okay, I'm cleaning the intake manifold. And you can see down in there. So far, I've just cleaned with this white towel this one side. I still have this other side to, to clean. So what I'm going to do is get Q-tips and run them down in there a little deeper. My fingers only reach so far, but uh, you can kind of see there's some stuff down in there. And I'll clean these out. I'm going to look to see if I can get new gaskets so that I make sure I get a nice, good, clean seal. I was thinking that could be the cause of my leak. And then I'll clean this over here too. Quite a bit of buildup around there, and then uh, clean the. Oh yeah, we have in here. Those aren't too bad compared to what I'm seeing online. They're actually pretty clean. Just kind of clean around the edges. And uh, that one's got some junk in there. I gotta get out. See that? So we gotta clean it up. So here's some good carbon build up. Let's see how this works. It's taking a screwdriver, scraping away the. Uh, I don't think we're getting all of it. I'd probably use a little spray cleaner fluid. Help dissolve some of that and then shove rags down in there to clean it out. This is scraping off a lot of it. Okay, we're gonna clean around in here. I prop that open with this little thing. Try to get the lip right in there. I'm using a little bit of brake cleaner. Spraying it in there. And shove in my toothpicks. You gotta really get where the the butterfly s hits the plate there that you'll build up soot and that thing ends up propping open a little bit and that's a vacuum leak affects your gas mileage and your performance. So I'll clean around the whole lip there, make sure the lip on this end is clean too. So when I do that, I'll obviously hold that end open. In. Pretty simple, but uh, I think it's a good maintenance thing to do. I'll most likely replace these hoses right here. You can tell they're getting old, they're breaking down. This is on a 2002, so it's, uh, what is it, 15 years old. Wow. Okay, now we're putting in the new gaskets. Um, you figure these old gaskets were, what, uh, 17, no, 15 years old. That's not bad for a piece of rubber. Actually held up pretty good, but they are squished. They get squished when you put them in, so you should replace them every time. And like I said before, that's an uh, air leak if you're leaking air through there. So, uh, that was all pushed down. I'll push it down just like that. Just go along and push them in. And, uh, and I'll be ready to mount it. Got everything all clean. There's a little bit of dirt still up there. Yeah, I gotta clean that up. Using the Q-tips.
getting the little stuff. Okay, I had to rig up a little setup here for this deal. This broke right down here, right at the base of the attachment. Where this attached into the mount that attaches there. You have to buy the whole new hose, which I think was 60 bucks or something. I thought I'd go get it at pick and pull, but there weren't any V6s at pick and pull today. So, this is my setup. I figure I'll probably have to redo it in not too distant future. I don't know how long this will hold up like this. But I think I'll be able to reach around and grab it. I don't know. It's kind of buried, but I figure this little video helped me know where it's at and how it's sitting. And uh, it's just kind of all pushed in there. I use a little rubber thing right here. I don't think that's under very much pressure. So it might hold. We'll see. Okay, now we're ready to put the bolts on. Put the intake manifold. I've mounted it. The gaskets are mounted underneath. Um, I'm going to put these bolts in. And each one will be, I treat it with a little thread locker. Just run the stuff you can see there's a little bit of residual I believe from when it was originally done yes um, so I have done this without the thread locker and I've had them because you don't tighten them very, down very tight you only go seven foot pounds or 84 inch pounds of pressure you want to use um, a torque wrench and uh, that's not very much poundage that's not very not very much pressure so you need to use some thread locker to ensure that it doesn't back them throw out and if your engine vibrating which it does they can back out i actually had it come out on my four cylinder which i didn't even know they were loose just went in and did a little maintenance work like this and sure enough so uh, again when you when you're doing this you'll treat the threads and then you start on your bolts in the middle of the engine the middle of the manifold and then work out to the ends so this end and then that end um, I'm gonna do two two I don't know anywho uh, but work from the center to the out and I'll probably do a cross cross pattern one here then over there and then there and over there um, so that you keep the um, basic part of the manifold mounted flat and it doesn't warp it and the book even says to do it um, in three to four steps, which trying to do seven foot pounds of pressure in three to four different steps is going to be tedious. I'll probably only end up doing it two, maybe three times to get the torque down. I'll probably end up torquing it more than that, maybe 10 pounds, uh, just because my torque wrench I don't think is really that accurate. I've never had a problem torquing over 10 pounds on my four cylinder, so. That's the next step. Okay, now I'm just putting all the extra pieces back in the same reverse op way that I took them apart. Finished bolting these bolts down and putting this piece in. And right now, oh, I already I did this too. I already talked talked about that. I'm putting on the hose down here, and there's another hose right here. Oh no, that's not the hose. That is a, a bolt. So hopefully you guys can see that. And, uh, and then I'll finish up with these final little vacuum hoses that I have all over the place. And then 